Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to the 10th Annual Law Enforcement Memorial Service here at the Government Center from the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office in the New River Valley. Uh, law enforcement uh, members with Christiansburg, Blacksburg, Virginia Tech, and Montgomery County Sheriff's Office. At this time, I'd like for everyone to please stand and remain standing for the presentation of the code by the Christiansburg Police Department code card. And if you would please remain standing after the presentation of colors for the singing of our national anthem by the Honorable Erica Williams, Clerk of the Circuit Court for Montgomery County. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets were clear the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say At this time, I'd like to call upon Deputy Doug Testerman for our invocation. If you would, please remain standing until after the invocation. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we come to you at this time that we have set apart to remember and to reflect upon and to honor many fellow law enforcement partners that have given their lives in the fulfillment of their duty. And we plead for your presence and your power and your grace to be bestowed upon us during this ceremony for we cannot honor our fallen heroes as we should without requesting your faithful witness to be upon our thoughts and our words and our memories that we have today. So in your name, Lord, we ask that you would bless our time this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Once again, I'd like to welcome everyone to the 10th Annual Law Enforcement Memorial Service. We gather here each year, uh, the day following the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Week in Washington, D.C. And the purpose for our gathering here is a local ceremony uh, for which we can bring members of, of the general public and the law enforcement communities together to remember those in which we have lost in the New River Valley and across this great nation in the service of law enforcement and corrections uh, as they provide services to the citizens of the United States. 
in this great country. In 2013, and those are the officers that were remembered in D.C. this year, and their names were etched upon the National Law Enforcement Memorial Wall, there were 105 officers killed in the line of duty nationally. Fortunately for the Commonwealth of Virginia, fortunately for the Commonwealth of Virginia, we suffered too. There have been many a year that we suffered very, very much higher numbers here in the Commonwealth also as well across this nation. In 2014, uh, to date, there have been 42 law enforcement officers killed. So in the last five months, there have been 42 law enforcement officers killed across this nation and two in the Commonwealth of Virginia thus far this year. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the officers here in the New River Valley. Many of us worked with them. Many of us knew them. Some of you didn't, but still, they made the ultimate sacrifice by laying their lives on the line so that you could live in a safer and peaceful, peace, more peaceful community. I apologize. Those were Officer Terry Griffith with the Christiansburg Police Department, Scott Hilton with the Christiansburg Police Department, and then De uh, Security Guard Derek McFarland at Montgomery Regional Hospital. At the Sheriff's Office, we, saw, we, we lost Corporal Eric E. Sutton, and then, just a year ago, Derek Krause at Virginia Tech Police Department. Everyone knows us. Everyone knows who we are because we stand out. We wear a uniform. We wear a badge with honor, dignity, and pride. These officers put their lives once again on the line so that they can serve this community and they did that through the ultimate sacrifice. At this time I'd like to recognize our guest speaker and this young man I'll call him was not very difficult to even have to try to talk in to come and speak today. He's someone we all know and we've all known for many years, think very highly of, and now he serves in the House of Representatives. This year's guest speaker is Delegate Nick Rush. He serves the seventh house seat. Uh, Nick was born and raised here in Christiansburg. He was schooled here in Christiansburg. After graduating from high school, Nick went to the U.S. Army. Wish I could have talked him into the Marine Corps, and I'm sure his brother does too. But that's okay. He still served our country. He was in the prestigious 82nd Airborne. He also was the youngest member elected to the Montgomery County Board of Supervisors, where he served for 12 years before going into private business. Then Nick decided to get back into politics. He's 23 when he got elected to the Board of Supervisors. I'm not going to ask him how old he is today or how old he was when he first got elected to the House, seventh seat of the House. But uh, Nick serves in the House of Delegates, covers Floyd, Montgomery, parts of Pulaski. And Nick and his wife live here in Christiansburg. His oldest son, Cody, is a graduate of Virginia Tech and is an armor officer stationed at Fort Hood, Texas. Nick's youngest son, Forrest, just completed his senior year at Virginia Tech in the Army ROTC program, and his daughter, Lily, is a student at Pathway Christian Academy. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Delegate Nick Rush. Thank you. All right, a um, couple of answers there. I'm 46, so it's been 23 years. Um, and when I did start, I did not need these. Um, so I, I'm going to have to wear my glasses today. 
Thank you, Sheriff Wick, for the introduction. What an honor it is to be invited here today to pay tribute to the service and dedication of our law enforcement officers and our deputies, and the sacrifices they made in order to keep our friends, family, and community safe. When asked to speak today, I struggle with what to say because the numbers are staggering. As uh, Sheriff Witt uh, previously mentioned, in 2013, 105 law enforcement officers lost their lives in the line of duty. Already in 2014-42. You know, it's, a, it's about service, and these guys, these women, men and women do it every day. So, but like any Southern politician, I thought I would start with a story, and one I heard in church, no less. See, there was a 12-year-old girl who was diagnosed with a serious disorder. She was very sick. The doc doctors thought her best chance was a bone marrow transplant. So they, they tested her father. He wasn't a match. They tested the mother. She was not a match. She had a younger brother. She, he was also tested, and thank God he was a match. So the father explained to his young son the gravity of the situation and that his sister would die without this important transplant. And he was the only one able to help. Your father asked. Father asked the brother, will you do this? He immediately said yes. They informed the doctor they scheduled a procedure. A week later, the family's in the hospital. The sister is in one room being prepped for the surgery. The son is in another. The young son looked up scared to his father and said, Dad, is this when I die? Officer Terry Griffith, Officer Scott Hilton, Corporal Eric Sutton, Officer Derek Krause. Like this young boy, they were willing to commit anything, whether to be protective sister, a brother in uniform, or their community at large. And like the officers in this room and on the road today, you are committed to protect and serve and you never know what sacrifice you will be able to make. Every day when you go to work, it's will I be asked to do something that others would not be willing to do? Is it a scuffle? Is it, uh, is it missing, to, it was missing my son or daughter's soccer game? Or is it the ultimate sacrifice? And every day you get up, you come to work, and you're willing to do the sacrifice. And, as a, and so on behalf of a grateful community, the elected officials in the room, I say to the families of the law enforcement officers who paid that ultimate sacrifice, I'm sorry for your loss and thank you. And those of you who are still on the job, I thank you. I thank you and your family for your willing to sacrifice for our community. It's been a great honor to be able to speak here. Uh, service runs deep in my family. And um, it, if you ever need anything, uh, Tommy, please let me know. Thank you all. Thank you, Nick. Um, gosh, I've known him for years, and I've always known him as Nick. So I, it, it's very difficult when I come to Richmond to call you Delicate Rush. And when I hear Delicate Rush, it really doesn't ring a bell to me. So. With that being said, thank you for those kind words, uh, uh, words of encouragement, uh, especially for the family members of the surviving officers and, and, and their children. Uh, my goodness, that is truly the sacrifice and the ultimate sacrifice. At this time, I'd like to introduce uh, members from the Western Virginia Regional Jail who are going to lay the wreath or set the wreath in remembrance of the fallen officers for the year 2013.
amazing grace. It's hard to even speak or for words to come over my lips after I've heard or heard me even to sing that wonderful song. It is just so heart breaking but so inspirational and uplifting that my emotions is totally run them up with me. This is about remembering not who I am or my legacy. Not Delicate Rush and his legacy, Miss Williams, our judges, and all the other dignitaries uh, and members in this community. This is about those who made and paid the ultimate sacrifice and the families of those. I've suffered loss in my family as I imagine every member in attendance has in this room. I cannot ever imagine having lost my father when he was a police officer in the city of Radford and I was a young boy. My sister couldn't have imagined it as a young girl. But we each year find ourselves continually counting the number of officers that we lose. And the number just keeps going up and then it takes a little lull, drops a little bit and then it shoots back up and it's all to do with where we are in society and the generation in which we live I guess. I can remember in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, I can't remember a law enforcement officer being killed in the city of Radford. And it just seems like every year they just continually, one after the other, and folks believe me, it's not because law enforcement, law enforcement officers are not prepared. It's because of the lack of respect I think has been taught in, in the households of, of American families today for what law enforcement officers provide for the citizens of their uh, jurisdiction in the Commonwealth in our great nation. No better service than the who, he or she who has served our country and our Commonwealth or our locality in some fashion. None of us and none of us ever got in it for the money or the glory or the working uh, arrangements, shifts, whatever you want to call them. Because believe me, if that were the case, we wouldn't be in law enforcement. I take, and, and, and I hesitate to say this because I think there's a calling, uh, just like a young man or young woman or whoever studies the Bible and feels a calling to, to service the Lord by, by pastoring a church, going to, going to school and, and getting his uh, master's. Uh, license and, and pastoring a church and leading a flock uh, of parishioners. I don't hold it to that level, but I liken it to that type of it's a calling. It is truly a calling. And from me to all of you in whatever capacity, thank you. Thank you for your many years of service and uh, thank you for the years after I'm gone and you're protecting me in this community. At this time, I would like for everyone to please stand for the benediction by Deputy Doug Testman, Montgomery County Sheriff's Office. And if you would, please remain standing after the uh, benediction for the 21-gun salute and the playing of taps by the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office on the guard. I'd like to just read some of the sacred scripture in closing. It says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. 
The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. The rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God, to thee for good. And if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore ye must needs be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience' sake. And for this cause, pay tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Let's pray. Lord, as we have come together this afternoon to remember these that have given their the ultimate sacrifice, and Lord, how that they gave so much before that time that they gave their all going out and working each and every day and being away from family but doing it because it is a calling that they are ministers of thee to bring justice upon the evil and Lord I just pray that you would comfort the families of those that have made this ultimate sacrifice Pray that you would reach in to uh, the wives and the husbands and the children and their parents. Lord, just move upon and comfort like only you can. And we also ask, Lord, that you would protect us again another year as many will be out there doing the same job that you've called us to do. And we need your protection. We need you to guide us and lead us. And Lord, that you would help us to withstand the evil that is out in this day that we face. And Lord, we also do not want to forget the great sacrifice that you made for us. We thank you for that. And so Lord, I pray that you would send us away tonight, dismiss us with your power, with your blessing, with your grace to be upon us. As we go and leave this place, remembering those that we loved and remembering those that we owe so much to. And Lord, that we would honor their names and their lives and their sacrifice. In your name we pray. Amen. Sir, I can't. Praise them. Oh. that concludes our, concludes our ceremony for today. I can't even get a word out.
concludes our ceremony for the day. I want to thank each and every one of you so much for attending. Uh, look forward to seeing you once again next year in, in certain hopes and prayers that we can have lesser numbers of officers and family members who have suffered through the loss of their family member in the upcoming year. Thank you.